How good is it when you wake up overnight and you're craving your most favorite thing in the entire world? You fuss and you yell out a little bit and then suddenly somebody brings you that thing. No effort on your behalf whatsoever. And they go, here, here you go. It's a pretty sweet deal that you got yourself sorted there. But up to a certain age, kind of no longer appropriate. And that's maybe anything beyond 12 months of age. I expect if you're watching this video, that means that you are unfortunately the person that is having to bring a certain someone, a certain something overnight because they're fussing and fighting. Today, I'm answering your sleep question. What do you recommend for an 18 month old who is hungry and waking overnight for a bottle? Hi, I'm Taylor, one of the pediatric sleep experts here at Little Ones and mother to one hilarious little girl. Here at Little Ones, we specialize in pediatric sleep ranging from newborn right through to six years of age. We have sleep programs for each specific age and we also have our very own support village where you can seek any assistance day or night from one of the many sleep consultants that we have available for you. We do this via our custom built app and we've been able to help over 200,000 families with their little one's sleep. You can visit our website at www.littleones.co. So if your 18 month old is waking over the night and you are resettling them by giving them a bottle, more than likely this is a habit above all else. A toddler at this age, realistically, if their diet is fully balanced uh, with three solid meals a day, a morning tea, an afternoon tea, and some at this age may still be getting a morning milk feed and an evening milk feed, but so long as all of that is covered during the day, your 18 month old doesn't technically need to have a milk feed overnight. They're just doing it as a way to settle. So let's look at how this might have actually started. In some circumstances, some little ones may have just continued to wake right through the night uh, from babyhood <laughs> right through until toddlerhood where they're still having a milk feed overnight, in which case we can slowly wean them off this bottle. For your bottle fed baby, what you could do to reduce those feeds is reduce it by about 30 mils every night until you're essentially down to 30 mils and then you'll be working on the settling component rather than feeding them as the default. If for some of you, you might be breastfeeding your little one back to sleep, same scenario, you're just gonna slowly reduce how much milk they get. Obviously this is a little bit trickier to, cause how do you measure breast milk as it's coming out into your baby? But what you can do is time it. So um, say your little one feeds for 10 minutes, Every night you could reduce that by about a minute or two minutes until you're essentially down to about three or four minutes. And then again, you would stop offering the milk and just work towards settling your little one to sleep and then self-settling. In some circumstances though, this may have just been a new thing that's been introduced to your little one where previously they might've been sleeping through and then sometimes things just throw a spanner in the works. So. Sickness, that's a really big one. Um, sometimes it can be really beneficial to actually give your little one feeds overnight. If they aren't feeding as much during the day, if they're feeling really, really rotten, and you might actually be like, oh my God, I, I feel like they barely ate today and they keep waking overnight. Like, let's just give them some milk. Hopefully that will settle them down and they'll, they'll feel full because maybe they're hungry. So you can resort to that and oftentimes Yep, that, that could be great. Breast milk can be a magic milk and a formula feed overnight as well might help to um, abate any hunger that they might be having. But this then becomes a learned behavior. It becomes a habit because then your little one will be waking when they're no longer feeling unwell. They'll still wake up and be like, that was really good. Can I get some more of that milk though? And then you just keep resorting to, here you go, have some milk, have some milk, have some milk, have some milk. And then also another thing that can create this as a bit of a habit is 
There is a time during their age, it's around 15 to 18 months or so, where it's kind of followed through from the 15 month regression, but it's it's this follow through from once they've dropped down to one nap per day and their sleep is consolidating a little bit and sometimes they can wake overnight and you might be like, where has this come from? And then you might just assume like, far out, I'm running out of ideas. I don't know why you're waking overnight. Have some milk and then the habit begins from there. Another thing too, uh, we went through this with my little one as well, where she was waking over the, overnight. She might be getting a little bit warm or whatever. I was like, maybe she's thirsty. Maybe she's just thirsty. But I didn't want to get into the habit of going in and being like, do you want some water? Because then again, that becomes a habit where she would see me and then be like, I like seeing you overnight. Let's keep doing this. So what I did instead was I introduced a a drink bottle into her bed of an evening. I'd point it out to her and be like, here's your water. If you need a drink overnight, get this. We've got a really good one, doesn't leak. It's got a bendy straw in it that's weighted. So regardless of how she's laying, she, she can drink. Full disclaimer though, the first few nights that I introduced that bottle to her, oh my gosh, <laughs> when she was falling asleep, she was banging it on the cot and just like, I have a water bottle. And we're like, that's great, go to sleep. Eventually the novelty wore off and now she just knows. She hops into bed, she grabs her two little comforters and she grabs her drink bottle and she's like, I'm set, see you in the morning. Now the next point that I'm going to make is I'm going to say, check your little one's ability to self-settle. If they know how to self-settle during the day, that's great. You can essentially approach this like, you know how to do this, so I have complete faith in you being able to do this overnight as well. It will take a bit of time. This age, they are trying to assert themselves within your family and within the world. They're trying to say, no, no, I know how to say no, and I know how to get my point across even if my words aren't amazing. They know how to say, I want some control. So you need to be really, really consistent in your approach, but keep moving forward in your steps. Any moment that you step back and make things easier for them, or you go back a step, they're gonna be like, ha 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 ha, I know how to beat you. <laughs> and then you're just gonna keep going in this vicious cycle. So it takes time, it takes consistency, and it takes a lot of patience, but you will get there. Within our program as well, we do have information on self-settling methods that you can tweak to suit you. Uh, there's a range to choose from there. So they'll be able to help you with whichever option you choose to self-settle your little one back to sleep. Most often it, it becomes this sort of parent presence approach where you're essentially there, you're showing that you're supporting them, but each night you're reducing how much you're actually within the room with them until you're essentially out the door they might wake up overnight, you go, you've got this, you know how to do this. And they're like, yeah, you're totally right, I got this. And then the habit's broken. Another really important point to go over as well is how much sleep your little one is having during the day. If they're having too much sleep for this age, then that will likely cause them to wake overnight. And then they might start crying out and be like, hey, yeah, some milk would be great right now and you go and give it, give it to them. Whereas if we can assure that they are having the correct balance of sleep during the day, they're less likely to then wake overnight. For an 18 month old, uh, if they're just turning 18 months, they might be on about two, two hours and 15 minutes. If they're a little bit over 18 months, two hours is probably about what we'd be looking for at this age. And we wanna make sure that that is over the middle of the day. So for your little one's day, we're working on a 12 hour window and we want that two hour nap in the middle of the day and a consistent bedtime that's not too late. Because if your little one goes to bed overtired because they've had a massive long awake window from their lunch nap to bedtime, that's also going to cause them to wake. So ideally we'd say about seven o'clock in the morning up, having a nap between 12.30 and 2.30 and then going to bed at about seven o'clock as well. That's a really, really good balance. Obviously too, the usual suspects, your sleep environment. So at this age, 
We want to make sure that their room is nice and dark, super, super dark. A lot of people can be tempted at this age to start introducing night lights. I'd be wary of that. It's more so from two years of age that we start to see them developing imagination and they can start to develop a fear of the dark. So ideally, I'd try to avoid any extra lighting within your little one's room for now. That includes for example, my heater in my little one's room, it has a little bit of a glow to it. So I duct tape that to make it super, super dark overnight. Speaking of heater, temperature is another really important one. Make sure that they aren't getting too hot or too cold because either of those things can cause them to wake overnight. And this could be the cause of them then requiring milk overnight. And then as always, white noise. Playing that consistently overnight can really, really help to resettle them back to sleep if they happen to wake up too soon. If you've got it on a consistent, steady cycle, that'll really, really help. You don't have to have it super loud at this age as well. And then one final thing as well, it may not apply to all little ones at this age, but for some it does. Some little ones overnight at this age could be waking if they've begun toilet training. Now I know there's a lot of people that start toilet training from, from a younger age. Personally, we, we did just by accident. But some little ones, if they've started the process of toilet training during the day, they can then wake overnight because they're like, oh, I need to wee and I feel weird about doing this in my bed now. So just be cautious of that too. If they know how to use the toilet during the day, it could be that they're waking overnight and uncomfortable. And so they might need a little bit of help to go to the toilet or you might need to reassure them and say, it's okay, you're wearing a night nappy you can do that. Within our program, we also have some really handy tips on how to toilet train your little one. Uh, so you can check that out too. And it has heaps of tips as well for overnight training. So I hope that has answered your question for today. Another really handy thing to about our programs now with the subscription is that if you do happen to sign up to the subscription, you're going to get access to our nutrition program as well, which has tons of recipes, meal ideas, and nutritional information for this age. If you feel like maybe they were waking overnight because they actually needed that nutritional boost from the milk. So you can check out all of the recipes that we've got. We've got some really handy tips as well for foods that can help to give your little one an amazing night's sleep. Personally, there's a recipe in there, the quinoa bolognese. Oh, so yum, so good. If you'd like to be notified of any more videos as we release them, make sure you subscribe to our channel and check that notification bell is on. That way you'll be notified as soon as they're uploaded by myself and the other sleep consultants that we've got here working at Little Ones. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.